Good afternoon all. I've just built this. It's uh, some digital logic on a breadboard. So what's on this board? Well we have uh, a shift register. It's an 8-bit serial in parallel out shift register and I've got eight blue LEDs looking at the outputs. So that's this thing here. It's actually the 74HC595 which you see a lot on uh, modules from China, particularly things like um, voltmeters where you've got seven segment displays because you can drive the seven segments or eight segments including the decimal point very easily with one of these things. So uh, that's that chip. Now this chip here is this. It's a 74HC86 quad two input exclusive OR gate. So it's got four uh, two input exclusive OR gates. That's that chip there. And then the third chip, this little 8 pin one, is a 7555 uh, CMOS version of the 555 timer, for which of course we need no data sheet because we all know what that is. Okay, uh, so without further ado, let's see how it works. Now I've lowered the blinds so that we can see the LEDs a bit better. Let's switch on. And it does that. A flashing yellow LED. Now that is just the output of the 7555 timer acting as a A-stable multivibrator, just an oscillator. Square wave, quite slow, a couple of hertz. And uh, that clock is actually being sent into the shift register chip. In fact, it's being sent in, split into uh, non-inverting and inverting signals and uh, fed into the shift register. And that's because this is a two-stage shift register and uh, you need an opposite phase clock on the shift register to the storage register. Otherwise you get kind of synchronization problems. But uh, why is nothing flying through the outputs of the shift register? Well, because what's going into the shift register, that's this green wire, the data input is simply zero. Now it's a fairly complicated way of generating zeros. I've got two 10K resistors pulling down the uh, two inputs of one of these exclusive OR gates. Now an exclusive OR gate, if the inputs are the same, it will generate a zero on the output. These inputs are the same, they're both low. Uh, the other exclusive OR gate is seeing obviously a zero there from the first exclusive OR gate. And the other input is also pulled down with a 1K resistor to ground, so it's putting out a zero. But fairly obviously you can see here that I have the option to uh, briefly pull this input high. And if you do that, an exclusive OR gate also works as a selectable inverter. So if you take one of the inputs high, the other input gets inverted. So let's press the switch, pull this input high, generating a one on the output. And I can do that briefly. And you'll see that one travels down the shift register drops out the end and now we've got zeros coming in again. If I hold this for a bit longer, we can get two or three or even four ones traveling down the shift register. But again, they drop out the end. Okay, well let's uh, take this to the max, hold this button down, fill the shift register with ones. But then of course, if I let go, it's now clocking zeros in and the ones travel down the shift register and drop out the end. And that's really it. There's not much more we can do with this. That's about the maximum amount of excitement there is to be had. Now, to take this to the next level of excitement, I'm going to put in a couple of linking wires. But before I do that, I'm actually going to pull out six of these LEDs, leaving just the first two. Now, that looks pretty boring. I can feed my ones in and they travel through the shift register and drop out the end. I might, if I'm careful, be able to get a single one to travel down my now two-bit shift register. Right, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in uh, these two wires and uh, I'm just going to explain where they're going to go. They're going to go onto the uh, outputs of the two LEDs. So the two LEDs are on the first two outputs, Q0 and Q1. Awkwardly, they're on pins 1 and 15, but uh, I've routed pin 15 round to the front using that little blue link wire. And I'm going to uh, connect these Q1 and Q0 outputs to the two inputs 
of this first exclusive OR gate. Now this exclusive OR gate is in effect doing nothing because one of its inputs is tied low. I'm not going to press the switch. So this is just acting as a non-inverter. It's a simple pass through. Right, let's add these two wires. So I need one there. Now this is going to override these 10K resistors. They're fairly weak pull downs and they're not going to be able to uh, do anything in the face of CMOS outputs, which are fairly low impedance. And what happens? Nothing. Okay, well, let's call that mode one, which is the boring mode where nothing happens. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this switch to briefly invert the output from these two shift registers, uh, these two exclusive OR gates, um, so that I'm feeding briefly a one into the shift register. And let's see what happens, just briefly. And now we can see that it's doing something quite interesting. There's a repeating sequence. It's uh, one zero, then one one, and then zero one. Let's have a look. One zero, one one, zero one. And it repeats round that sequence. It's a three stage sequence. So every time we get three pulses of the clock, the pattern repeats. It's a bit like a waltz. Right, so let's make a note of this sequence because it's quite interesting. Actually, I'll use pen. It's one zero, one one, and then zero one, and then it repeats. Now, if we convert uh, from binary into decimal, that's two, that's three, and that's one. So it's going two, three, one. Well, actually, it, we could think of it as going one, two, three, if it starts there. Now, in fact, it's not doing that at all because uh, my outputs here are Q0, the least significant output, and then Q1. So I've actually got these back to front. So in fact, it's going three, two, one, three, two, one. Now, because my binary outputs uh, don't lie in the normal sequence you would have them, I'm actually going to turn this completely round so that they do. So now we're looking at the least significant binary bit on the right hand side and the next most significant binary bit to the left of it, because that's how binary is laid out and represented in the real world. So now the sequence is three, two, one, three, two, one. If we want to have it in an ordered sequence, so that's one, one, which is three, one, zero, which is two, zero, one, which is one, three, two, one, and it's repeating. But uh, of course, we mustn't forget the other mode, which I can get by simply switching this off and back on again, and that is that we have zero, 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 um, just repeating forever. Now this one's pretty useless, we can't do much with it, but we've got to uh, remember that it's there. And if we want to get the more interesting pattern of three, two, one repeating, we've got to briefly feed something in to the shift register. Now I think actually because this is effectively shifting left, um, the first thing I fed in would have been zero, 01. So in fact, we'd have started here and the sequence would be 132. But that doesn't matter too much. Let's think of it as 321. So these are our two options. Okay, let's take a detailed look at this shift sequence. Now I suppose really I ought to turn this upside down because we want uh, Q0 on the right, Q1 uh, to the left of that. And we've got to remember now that the shifting is going from, we're feeding data in on the right and it's being shifted to the left. But let's take a look at why this sequence uh, goes in this order. Now we saw that when we shifted our one in, uh, if I turn this off again, so that we've got zeros passing through, fairly clearly if I feed a one in, it comes in from the right and shifts left. So in fact, the first pattern is in fact one. Let's see what happens in terms of shift register that makes that happen. We feed in 01, which is one. 
Now, if that 0 and 1 appear at the inputs of this exclusive OR gate, uh, because this is a difference detector, it's going to say, yes, these are different. I'm going to put a 1 on my output. That goes straight through this one and is fed in to the shift register, but not until these are shifted across. So the 0 drops out the end, the 1 is shifted left, and uh, now what did it say? Yes, it said that we're going to have another 1 come in. So there's the other 1, and we now have 3. Okay, so let's do this again. Uh, we now have a 1 and a 1 on the input of the exclusive OR gate. The difference detector says, oh, no, they're not different. I'm going to give you a 0. So it produces a 0. That's the next data byte, uh, data bit that's going to come in from the right. These are shifted down, so this one drops off the end. This one goes to there. This is now saying, I'm giving you a 0. So it gives you that 0. That produces this 1, 0, or 2 state. And uh, then what happens is that the uh, exclusive OR gate here is saying, oh, they're different. I'm going to give you a 1 again. So these shift down. The 0 goes to there, and the 1 comes in. And that is 01. So that is actually uh, this state. And the whole sequence repeats. Now let's briefly take a look at the other scenario where we've got zeros in there. Uh, the exclusive OR gate says, ah, OK, these are the same, so I'm going to give you a zero. The zeros shift down and the new zero comes in. So we never escape the sequence or the pattern, which is zero, zero, and it just runs around continuously. We only ever get one state. It never changes, and it is zero. Right, let's make this a bit more interesting. I'm going to pull these feedback wires out. Now, of course, what's going to happen now is zeros are being clocked through the shift register. Let's add another LED. So we now have, let's get those nice and in a neat sequence. We now have a three bit shift register. I suppose I should add that third LED to this diagram here. Um, now I'm going to put the wires back in, but they can't go back in where they were, otherwise we'll have effectively the same thing. Let's put them in, but shift them down. So I'm now looking at the two most significant LEDs. And what happens? Well, actually this happens. We're simply rotating a zero around. So I'm going to have to seed the uh, shift register again by feeding in a one. And away it goes. But uh, this time we have a more complicated sequence. Now it's quite difficult to follow, so I'm going to have to try and pick them off one at a time. I'll start with 1, uh, in other words, zero, zero, 001, because that's what we fed in. So where is it? Zero, zero, 001 and then 2. So it's zero, zero, 001, which is 1. Then it's uh, zero, 010, zero, which is 2. I'm going to have to watch it again now. Ah, I think five was next. That's one, two, five. Yes. So we've got a one, oh, one, which is decimal five. What's after that? Three, I think it was. Uh, zero, one, one is three. Let's keep watching it. Seven, I think, was next. One, one, one is seven. What's after seven? Six. One, one, zero is six. What's after six? One, zero, zero, which is four. What's after that? Ah, back to one. So it's a longer sequence. How many numbers does it involve? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a seven stage sequence, and there's no order to this. This is pseudo random. Now, once again, this does not include the zero state unless I switch it off. If I switch it off, then we only get the zero state. So this is an entirely separate option of zero, 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 which is zero. But it's nothing to do with the seven state sequence you get if you seed the shift register with something. Away goes the seven state sequence. This is entirely separate. So we've got two options again, the zero state, which is only ever zeros, and this one, which has seven options. Now, notice something about this. We have three bits here and seven options. And previously, we had two bits with three options. 
So the number of different states is actually 2 to the power of n minus 1. n is the number of bits that we're using. And uh, so here we're using 3 bits. 2 to the power of 3 is 8 minus 1. We get 7 patterns. When we were using only 2 bits, uh, 2 to the power of 2 is 4 minus 1. Gave us the 3 patterns. Now, what are we feeding into the exclusive OR gate? Well, we're feeding in the two most significant bits. But there is another option. We could fit in, feed in the most significant bit and the least significant bit, and the sequence will be different. Let's change this uh, wire over to the least significant bit. And now I'm going to write the sequence down again. Uh, I haven't got much space. Maybe I'll get lucky and it'll be two to start with. No, it'll have to be one to start with. So there's one, followed by three. One, three. What's after three? Seven. What's after seven? I missed it. One, three, seven, six. What's after six? Five, I think it was. After five, oh one oh, what's that? Two. Two and then four. So it, again, it's a seven state sequence, but the numbers are in a different order. Again, it's pseudo random. There's no sequence to that. There is a seven, six, five, two, four. So it's not quite as random as this one. We've got two options here. Right, finally, let's go to four bits. So I'm going to add in yet another LED. We've now got four bits. Now, in order to utilize those four bits in the sequence, I have to um, move one of these inputs to the exclusive OR gate onto what is effectively now bit three. The other one can be in ooh, a whole sequence of different positions. It can be uh, in bit zero, bit one, or bit two. So there are three options for that. Things are starting to get a bit complicated. Also, I'm thinking that this sequence is going to be 15 states long. I'll do that off camera, but I'll see if I can draw the sequence. Yes, yeah, so this did generate 15 states. I ran out of space. Uh, all the numbers are there from 1 to 15. Um, so yes, it is a full length sequence. Now, if I move these wires to a different position, I'm going to do that now, put them to there. This will generate uh, a 15 state sequence, uh, again in a pseudo random order. But if I move the wires to another position, this one, this does not generate a 15 state sequence. I'm going to write down the sequence for this one. Well, now I wasn't expecting that because what we've got here is a six state sequence. That's really interesting. Let's count them. Um, we can start at one, 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 because I can vision, I can find that, I can see that one. And I'm going to call that state one. So let's wait for it. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So you can see there are only six states, not uh, seven. So it gets very spooky as you get towards these larger numbers. And we've only got to four bits. What happens when we get to eight bits? And this is the world, my friends, of the linear feedback shift register. And the more bits you use in this simple circuit, the more massively complicated this all becomes. But I'm going to leave this complicated stuff uh, till another day. So for the moment, cheerio.